friends, welcome back to Storytime. I'm Sarah Coulter from the Curry Museum of Art. Today we are reading Remy and Lulu. It is all about a wonderful partnership of two painters and how they find inspiration from each other. Let's get reading. Remy and Lulu by Gavin Hawkes. Lulu lived in the studio of a great portrait painter on the Rue de Rivoli in Paris. Every day she studied and watched. She was a very hardworking dog and very smart. One day the studio was sold and all the beautiful portraits were packed into crates and taken away in a wagon. Lulu wandered the city, sleeping in doorways, eating from trash bins. Oh no, she's gone on a new adventure. She followed a road that took her far into the countryside. There, under a fig tree, she met a man with a tangled mop of hair. Beside him lay an easel, some rolls of canvas, and a paint box. Bonjour, he said. My name is Remy. Would you care for some lunch? Mmm. They shared a lump of hard cheese, a stale crust of bread, and some figs. What shall I call you, Remy asked. He squinted at the collar around her neck. <gasps> Lulu! She wagged her tail. Ooh, I could go for some cheese right now, would you? Remy was a painter. He traveled around the countryside painting portraits. He preferred large canvases and liked to use bold colors straight from the tube. I paint the essence of a person, not their likeness, he explained to Lulu. My eyesight is not good, Remy joked, but my vision is clear. Lulu noticed that few people were willing to pay for essence. What do you think of his paintings? When Remy painted, Lulu sat at his feet. He was like a wild man, snorting, grumbling, attacking the canvas with brushes full of dripping paint. One day, in the middle of a portrait of Madame Le Gros, Remy had to stop. His hands trembled and his head ached. He and Lulu had not eaten in three days. He went outside to rest under a tree. Can you imagine painting a portrait that big? Now, who is he painting a portrait of? Is that Madame Le Gros? Or is that the Wow. Lulu picked up a brush, squinted her eyes, and went to work. She's taking care of him. Later that afternoon, Remy finished the painting. <gasps> he was out of breath and pale. Voila, he said weakly. Madame Le Gros frowned at the portrait. Monsieur Le Gros's face became very red. He opened his mouth. Remy closed his eyes and braced himself. Ooh la la, exclaimed Madame Le Gros. Suddenly, as she bent over, Chérie, look, such a detail, such color. <gasps> Who do you think did this painting? What a likeness, breathed Monsieur Le Gros, and Remy opened his eyes. How did you do it? I paint from here, Remy said, tapping his chest. Isn't that right, Lulu? Monsieur Le Gros gave Remy twice the amount he had asked for. Then he hurried out to pay a visit to the art museum. Later that night, while feasting on sausage and pate, Remy laughed. You see, Lulu, he cried. When you follow your heart, success will follow you. Lulu thumped her tail and ate another piece of sausage. She looks quite happy, doesn't she? We both do. From then on, Remy and Lulu were very busy. Remy painted portraits of doctors, lawyers, musicians, even Mademoiselle Gigi, the famous actress. Everyone wanted a portrait by Remy. They rented a fine studio on the Rue de Rivoli. Remy bought a top hat and a silk scarf. Lulu wore a different silk handkerchief every day. There were parties to attend and picnics in the park. There was always enough to eat. I love the yellow on her. Do you have a favorite color? Remy's next portrait was of a famous optometrist, Dr. Lunette. Optometrists are people that look at your eyes. It was to be entered in the salon, the most prestigious art contest in all of Europe. He worked day and night on the large canvas. So, what do you think? He asked Lulu. Her tail thumped against the oriental carpet. Do you see Lulu's portrait that she painted? At the salon, the judges were astonished. Such detail. They cheered such color, they cried. We award the gold medal to Remy. Remy and Lulu danced for joy. 
Please, interrupted Dr. Lunette, as a token of my appreciation, I should like to present you with a little gift. Ooh la la, whispered Remy as he tried on the silver rimmed spectacles. For the first time, he noticed the color of Lulu's eyes. He gazed at the crowd, the good doctor's smiling face, and the finished portrait. Such detail, he wondered, scratching his beard. Such color, he murmured, glancing at Lulu, who sniffed the edge of the carpet. A perfect likeness, he frowned. Hmm, what do you think he's discovering now that he can see clearly? <gasps> oh. They rode home in silence. After that, the paint on Remy's palette became hard and dry. Patrons came, but Remy turned them all away. Lulu tried to cheer him up. <sighs> she performed her favorite tricks, but she only shrugged her shoulders and looked out the window. Oh, he's very sad. What do you do to trigger someone up when they're sad? One day, Lulu brought him an envelope that had been slipped through the mail slot. It was an invitation from Madame Renard, the owner of the exciting new gallery Renard. She wanted to meet him and Lulu and have a portrait done. Could they please come the next day to her chateau in the countryside? Remy read the letter twice and rubbed his chin thoughtfully. He remembered the sun on his face and the wind in his hair and the taste of figs. The next morning, Lulu was surprised to see Remy standing at the door. He had on his old painter's smock and his straw hat. He stood with his paint box in one hand and some roll of canvas in the other. He smiled for the first time in days. Lulu, he said, I have been missing the fresh air of the country and the sunshine. I think this will be our last portrait, eh? Then we shall paint landscapes in the country, perhaps, no? Lulu's ears dropped. Remy nodded, I understand. Once a portrait painter, always a portrait painter. Oh, she wants to keep painting portraits. I have something for you, Remy said. If a painter has her own vision, then she should have her own tools. What it, look at what he gave her. Oh, it's her own set. The carriage ride was long. When at last they stepped down at the gate, Remy breathed in the fresh country air and sighed. They walked up the long path together. What fantastic shapes, murmured Remy. Such details. Would you like to visit there? Madame Renard met them at the door. My dear Remy, she smiled. It is so good to finally meet you. He offered his hand. And this must be Lulu, whom I've heard so much about. She leaned over to pat Lulu on the head. Please do come in. She led them down a long corridor filled with paintings. It's a beautiful house. Remy very cautiously touched the brush to the canvas. He began to paint ever so slowly. First, he focused his eyes on Madame Renard's striking hat. Then he studied the exquisite diamond ne ne necklace that hung around her neck. He noticed the folds in her dress, the red leather boots, the complicated patterns in her oriental rug. His eyes darted from one detail to the next, like birds fluttering from twig to twig. He brushed, hesitated, unsure which way to go. Lou studied the small square of canvas on her easel. It was quiet, too quiet. What do you think? Why do you think that is? At last, Remy shook his head. It is no use. I am sorry, Madame Renard, he said, but I cannot. He felt a tug on his pant leg and looked down. Near his foot on the rug was a bundle. Lulu nudged it toward him with her paw. Oh my goodness. Remy unwrapped it. He stared for a moment at the old familiar glasses. Then he smiled and put them on his nose. It's changing his vision. He peered toward Madame Renard, who waited patiently. He took a deep breath, squinted his eyes, and with a laugh, attacked the canvas. His feet swished in the carpet as he paced. His hands jumped here and there, and the brush smacked the canvas, which quickly filled with bold, thick brushstrokes. Lulu painted quietly. The only sound she made was a thump, thump, thump of her tail on the floor. Look at her go. Voila, Remy announced several hours later. The portrait is complete. When Madame Renard saw the painting, she gasped. It's perfect, she said, a perfect essence. How do you do it? Remy blushed. I paint from here, tapping his chest. After examining Lulu's paintings with a special magnifying glass, Madame Renard clapped her hands. Genius, she cried, pure genius. You must display your work in my gallery. 
Remy smiled. Lulu wagged her tail. They did such a good job. They painted from the heart. Madame Renard took Remy by the arm. Would you like a tour of the art collection? Such extraordinary color, Remy exclaimed as they walked down the hall. However did you f find such art? Ah, replied Madame Renard. My eyesight is rather poor, you know, but my vision has always been clear. Look, they're in the gallery together. The end. Thank you all for joining me today. I hope you have someone at home that you like to paint with. Maybe it's a pet, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a family member. It always provides a little more inspiration. And sometimes you just need to paint from your heart to create something beautiful. We're now gonna to go to my friend Lauren and she is going to share a wonderful art activity that you can do at home. Thanks for the great story, Sarah. Hi, I'm Lauren. And today we're going to be using the book as inspiration to make our very own portrait painting. So grab some paints, whatever you have at home will work fine. And we're going to use a mirror for a self portrait or a picture if you wanna make a portrait of a pet or a different family member. Follow along with the time-lapse and create your very own personal portrait.